I'm pleased to be standing here today with uh, Colonel Perez and uh, alongside uh, many members of the Province Police Department who have worked uh, very hard over the last month to uh, once again help uh, cut down on illegal drug sales in Kennedy Plaza. Since entering office, I've known uh, and made a priority out of increasing public safety and have heard loud and clear the feedback that Kennedy Plaza and Burnside Park remain a place that it feels unsafe for too many. Uh, this is front of mind for the people who are in the plaza every day, students waiting for a bus, workers, visitors, and residents. Uh, thousands of people interact with Kennedy Plaza every day, and they deserve to be able to do so uh, free from harassment or a feeling of uh, lack of safety due to illegal drug use. Last year, I stood at this podium with a similar announcement where we had a successful operation in Kennedy Plaza that led to the arrest of nearly two dozen individuals and the removal of illegal narcotics and dealers from our streets. Uh, that improved the situation for some time. Uh, we're back again with a similar operation, having uh, received warrants for uh, 22 individuals who've been distributing illegal narcotics in the center of our city. Our police department uh, has gone through a tremendous effort to both apprehend those folks and send a message that that kind of behavior is not to be tolerated in Kennedy Plaza downtown or truly anywhere else in the city. And it is one piece of a broader strategy to make Providence a safer place. In addition to the various efforts that we engage in for harm reduction, uh, including Narcan distribution, overdose prevention work, uh, partnership with EMS and our fire department, we are working to both protect the most vulnerable but also crack down on those who prey on the vulnerable. Uh, as promised, we are putting public safety at the forefront. Uh, we will continue our efforts to invest in this exceptional police department. As many people know, we've recently graduated the second academy in my tenure and are now actively recruiting for the third academy. We also, uh, later today, will be making an announcement regarding additional investments in violence intervention. Uh, all of these things together, more and better policing, thoughtful harm reduction strategies to help those who are struggling with addiction, and violence intervention strategies all work together. No one of these things will make Providence uh, a safer city, but together we can uh, both treat those who are suffering from drug use uh, and substance use disorders, uh, crack down on those who are preying upon those who are similarly suffering, and try to get at the root causes of many of the violent and criminal activity in our city. And so uh, I would like to introduce the Colonel of the Province Police, Oscar Perez, where he can give some more details about the operation that has just concluded. Colonel? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, I definitely want to thank the Honorable Mayor uh, for his constant support to the Providence Police Department and his commitment to the public safety of our great city. Uh, today I'll provide you with the uh, details and update on a significant narcotics operation uh, that took place within the downtown area of our city. During this past month of August, members of the Providence Police Narcotics Bureau conducted an investigation into uh, Kennedy Plaza and the surrounding downtown Providence area to address the distribution and use of illegal narcotics. Several different officers acted in an undercover capacity, which resulted in the secret indictment of 22 individuals for unlawful delivery of, co of co cocaine, conspiracy, um, and at this time, uh, we have actually, uh, at this time of this release, 20 of the suspects have been apprehended and charged, and the remaining two individuals have active superior court arrest warrants. The majority of the 22 suspects have criminal histories within, uh, within our state, with 14 of the suspects having previous felony violent crime convictions to include robbery, sexual assault, felony assault, illegal firearm offenses, drug distribution offenses, and domestic violent offenses. As well, 10 of these suspects are probation violators, 17 of them the last known addresses in the city of Providence. I want to reassure the community that law enforcement is working diligently to keep this area safe and these operations like this is just one step in our broader strategy to combat drug-related crimes. We will continue to take decis decisive action against those who lose, uh, who actually bring drugs and, and violence into our neighborhoods. And in closing, I want to thank, actually, to my left, Lieutenant David Allen, 
Commander, uh, actually Major La Payton and his, and his command and Arcadio Division did an outstanding work, and members of the patrol division as well, to my right, Major Aspinall and his uh, unit, the patrol officers who conducted such a great work downtown. Uh, it's, uh, I said it before, undercover operations are difficult, are dangerous, uh, but this is something that we have to do to ensure that this area is safe for those that come and commute in, in, in our city. Uh, and, and I know for a fact that, uh, as the mayor stated, there's a lot of different initiatives, like harm reduction initiatives that we work very uh, uh, close with, communication with different stakeholders downtown. But unfortunately, we are the, uh, well, fortunately we are the first line of response, and we have to uh, actually intervene when uh, criminal activity is being conducted in these areas. So we'll open up for questions. Colonel, are any of these people repeat from last summer's roundup? Correct. Uh, one of them is actually a repeat offender, and he was arrested. Correct. Two people still being searched for any concern to the public in that? None at all. Uh, they are being, uh, actually, we're looking for them. Like I said to my left, Detective Allen and his team, as well the patrol division and other detectives, we're looking for them, so no, no concern. Uh, and the other uh, individuals are actually being held at the ACI. What prompts this? What, I mean, the mayor talked about trying to keep downtown safe. You did it one time last summer. What initiated it? Well, as, as I stated before, you know, we are the first line of response when it comes to criminal activity. We're notified of it. Uh, obviously, we truly understand the harm reduction initiatives are important, especially for this vulnerable population. But when we hear of, uh, of individuals taking advantage of this vulnerable population, we have to take action. And so at that point, that's what we did when we heard uh, complaints and actually uh, our own officers uh, coming up uh, on some of this criminal activity. Uh, actually, the lieutenant to my left, actually, and, and detectives started the investigation, so that's what, that's what initiated. Go ahead, Pat. A uh, question for Mayor Smiley. Yeah. Mayor, if you're of a certain age, uh, I saw the movie French Connection in the theaters. Uh, with all respect to the bravery and the ongoing efforts of the province police, we have been watching similar busts take place now for in excess of 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, is it time to admit that, that we need to stop putting our great police officers Uh, I don't believe so, no. Uh, it's not time to admit that. We, uh, we have now legalized marijuana in the state and in many places around the country. We're trying to do that in a thoughtful way in the city, but beyond that, uh, I don't support any further legalization efforts. Uh, it is true that this feels like a repeat cycle, uh, and we fully admit that, uh, but that's why it's critical to understand that this is not our only strategy. The only action we are taking is not simply roundups in Kennedy Plaza, though we will continue to do so. Uh, we have a thoughtful approach to substance use disorder in the city. Uh, we invest significant funds in harm reduction. We are about to open the first uh, overdose prevention center in the state here in the city. Uh, and you'll note that the people we've arrested uh, are not the users, but the dealers and distributors. Uh, and so. Uh, and, and to speak a bit to Steve's question as well, uh, we understand that this is substantially similar to last year's operation. And honestly, people should expect that we will have a substantially similar operation again next year. Uh, we will stay at this until we change the tone and tenor of downtown and Kennedy Plaza and Burnside Park, uh, that this is not an acceptable place to have open air drug dealing in the city of Providence. And it is one part of a larger strategy, but it's an important part, and we will uh, stay at this until there is a different tone and tenor in the plaza. Mayor, you hinted at another announcement coming today with violence prevention and, and another, uh, with other uh, initiatives. Um, put those together for us. Yeah. So when we look at uh, crime in the city, we understand uh, we need to both get at the root causes of crime, uh, which in many cases are educational opportunities, economic opportunities, uh, other sources of uh, breakdown of the family and lack of community supports. Uh, and so we work closely with community partners who the city uh, funds much more so than any other city in the state of Rhode Island. And we'll be making an announcement with uh, some of those community partners or, or funding available that those community partners can apply for later today. We also uh, 
invest in community policing, which is something that the city of Providence takes great pride in and nationally are known for, uh, which is to say that we're not just doing operations like the one we're here to announce today, but we also have patrol men and women who work for Major Aspinall who are going to church meetings, who are going to neighborhood association meetings, who understand and know the business owners that on their beat. And they're able to do both preventative, proactive police work, but also reactive police work when there's an instance of a violent crime. And then we're finally still trying to change the rules of the game through legislative changes and through policy changes, where we still have way too many illegal guns on our streets, and we advocate for tighter, stricter gun laws. We have many, many behavioral health and mental health problems in our city and in our state, and the solution to those requires more than just the city of Providence. It requires state funding, it requires our medical community, it requires more investments in supports for the unhoused, for those struggling with mental health issues. This is a, a, a complex problem that requires multiple strategies to address, and to the extent that our resources allow us to do so, we are addressing as best as we can in every one of those realms. Uh, but Providence alone can't solve some of these problems. The Providence taxpayers alone can't pay for all of these solutions. And so we do what we can and we advocate then for the rest. Were those operations specifically targeted for people dealing with cocaine or was it looking for any type of drug use? So yeah, actually, uh, uh, it all involved cocaine purchases, uh, unlawful deliveries, but we target actually that criminal element of uh, drug dealing in the in that area. So. And if I could just add on the on the cocaine front, uh, and, and many of you have reported on this in the past, as you know, uh, the drug supply locally, similar to nationally, uh, is getting mixed and, and contaminated more and more with uh, even deadlier substances like fentanyl. And so uh, it's not just cocaine, it's cocaine and what might be in that cocaine. Uh, and we know that, you know, they say a, um, a piece of fentanyl the size of a pinhead is enough to kill you from an overdose. And, and so in addition to both cracking down on drug dealers, uh, we also believe we're saving lives of, of users from potential overdose deaths. Uh, this is not uh, the cocaine from decades ago. This is cocaine that has been cut uh, in irregular ways. People do not always know what they're taking. And it is a severe overdose risk. Uh, and, and so it is, uh, it is a very dangerous time uh, for those who are struggling with substance use. And, and it's something that, in addition to making downtown safer uh, for all, it has the potential to save lives for those who are using as well. Of the 22 people the warrant was put out for, do you know how many of them were experiencing homelessness, just homeless underlying causes? Yeah, so they were all, all of them actually were drug dealers. Uh, a lot of these guys, and I'm not sure if uh, you have that info. Yeah, there may have been a couple that were on house. It was all street level drug dealing, uh, so with small amounts, uh, small prices. Uh, but again, like the mayor stated, it's a, it's definitely a drug that can be uh, laced with other stuff that obviously has increased a lot of overdoses in, in these vulnerable populations. So, right back. The, the state of Rhode Island publishes routinely an overdose hot list, if you will, uh, which points out sporadic, uh, if you will, explosions in drug overdose. Does the Rhode Island Yeah, we use every tool and resource we can uh, when it comes to uh, making sure that we that we have them. So yes, we do. Yeah. One delivery of Schedule Four on there. I'm sorry. The one there's one delivery coming from Michael Kelly. Uh, unlawful delivery of Schedule Four drugs. Just wondering what that is. It's not cocaine. I think he also sold a pill. Or pills. Just a pill sale. 